In this AutoCAD demo video, I'd like to go over how you might go about constructing a conference room uh, or, you know, something that looks like this. So it's a basic room with a curved wall and then we have an octagonal table inside of it and a few plants. The basic room dimensions are 24 feet wide and 28 feet deep. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually start constructing this shape kind of has a almost a tombstone type of shape. I'm just going to move that off to the side. And what I'll do is just start out with a basic line. And I'm going to do the horizontal line at the bottom and that's 24 feet. And then I will do another line that's coming from the midpoint straight up and I'll do that one 28 feet. And then I can just use my basic copy command to copy that line from the middle to each side. And then I'll use a circle with the center radius and go from this point on the middle line out and allow my object snaps to guide my circle so that it fits in there perfectly. You might be thinking this seems too tall. Well, all we have to do now is move the circle from this top quadrant point straight down. Once we get that into place, we can use our trim command, select this line work, and frankly, it could even be kind of sloppy and just select the whole thing, enter. And I'll just get rid of these extra lines, hit enter, and then delete this middle one. Now I have that basic tombstone shape for the room. I can now use my modify command and join and join this whole thing together so it's one continuous shape. That kind of makes things a little bit easier. To get the thickness of the walls, what we can do is an offset and we'll do it a distance of five inches. Select the exterior wall and then you could either go out or in, but based on the measurements I put in, I'll click on the inside. So now we have an actual wall thickness of 5 inches, just like we do over here. Then we want to put in this doorway. So to do that, I'm going to use my line command, and I'm going to make sure I have on object snap tracking down at the bottom of my screen. With that on, what I can do is come over here to the lower right hand corner, and momentarily I can hover over this inside endpoint. Then without clicking, I can just pull my mouse to the left, and when you get that green dotted line, that's CAD trying to figure out where you want to be from that point that you hovered over. So I can type in 5 inches, enter, and now I can pull my mouse straight down, and you'll see that I'm actually drawing a line 5 inches from this original corner. So I can type in 5 inches again, and enter, and now I have a vertical line 5 inches from the corner. Now I could, you know, do a variety of things. I could, for example, offset 36 inches and offset this line off to the left. I could have also copied it over. Um, there's multiple ways to do everything. Now I'll use my trim command, select this area, enter, and get rid of these two horizontal lines. Enter again. Then I'll use my line and click from this point straight up 36 inches to put in a very simple door. I'm just using a singular line. Once we have that in place, if we take a look over here, we want to put in this nice arc for the door swing. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the draw panel and pick an arc. And for this particular situation, the appropriate one will be the start center, end. And this takes a little bit of, of getting used to. It can be a little bit awkward. But if we pick this one, we'll pick the start, the center, and then the end. Okay, that's a little bit confusing. So it's the start point here, the center, so think of the center of the circle that's spinning around, and then the end point. Okay, that can be a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's a pretty handy tool. 
Now that we have the basic wall and the door, let's go ahead and put in this octagonal table and chairs. So to do that, I'm going to come up and grab my polygon tool. And then I will come in and I'll actually snap to the center of this circle here that we had originally created. Even though it's all trimmed away, we'll still be able to grab that. So the polygon command is asking me number of sides, 8. So I can just hit enter, but if you need to put an 8 there, you can do that. And now we can say we want to snap right here. We'll get it right in the middle. Then we need to tell CAD if we want to be inscribed or circumscribed about a circle, which I've talked about in another video. And in this case, I want to do circumscribed or C. And then we specify the radius. So I'm going to do a radius of 4 feet, which means my table will be 8 feet wide. And then I'm going to do an offset of 4 inches and offset that inside just to add a little detail to that table like we have over here. Now to do those chairs, we're going to do the same thing we did before with a line, but we'll just make it smaller. And this time I think maybe I'll make it 26 inches wide, make the chair a little wider. And then I'll do 28 inches deep again, sure. Then I'll copy this line over. I'll do a simple circle with the center point and then radius snapping to those endpoints. And then I'll move the circle straight down from its quadrant point and snap it to that uh, end point of the middle line. I will trim out this extra line work. Delete or erase that middle line. And I'll do a join or J for join to join that entire chair together. Once we have that, we can use our move command, select the chair, and move it from the midpoint on the base here, the front of the chair, and I'll snap it to the midpoint on the edge of this table. Now at this point you could make copies and rotate each of the chairs, but a much easier way to go about it would be to do an array. So I'll pick the polar array because I want to go around a center point. I will pick the chairs because that, or chair, that's what I'm interested in rotating. So I'll hit enter, and now it says specify the center point. Well, because I snapped my um, octagonal table to the center point of the circle, I have one right here. If I hadn't done that, uh, polygons don't give you a center point, so I would need to give myself a guideline of some sort. So I can snap right here to the middle, and you'll see that things aren't lining up so well. Well, that's because under my number of items, it has six. Well, I have an eight-sided table, so I'll change that to eight. And now you'll see they fit in there quite nicely. Then I can close the array, and I finished my table. Now, one of my last steps is to be doing, um, you know, some basic plant, something like this. Now, these are not beautiful by any stretch of the imagination, but they get the job done. So to do something like that, we can really, you know, be pretty simple about it. So I'm just going to do it in this outside space outside of my room. And I'll do a circle with a center and then radius of 12 inches. And I'll do another one right inside of that at maybe um, 10 inches. You know, that's just giving me the idea of a, a plant or a pot. Then I'll grab my polyline. And with that command, I'm basically just going to go from the center point and I'm going to turn off ortho and I'll just make some triangles. Okay, so you can be as detailed about this or, you know, as um, kind of boxy as you want to be. So I'm just, you know, for speed's sake, not doing anything super fancy. And when you have objects snap on and you're working in a small area like this, you need to be a little careful because it is going to want to snap to things uh, on your drawings. You need to 
be careful of that and sort of be paying attention to what what your mouse might be doing. Once you're all done, you just hit enter. And now the actual plant part is one continuous polyline. And at this point, you know, that could be good enough. But I think what's kind of nice to do is if you take a look at this one, is to trim out the areas of the pot so it doesn't look like you can see through the leaves of this big palmy, ferny plant. Okay, so I'm going to do trim. Select all this line work and hit enter. And then I'm just going to go through and cut away where I shouldn't be seeing the outline of that planter, so where I can't see through the leaves. Almost done. Alright, it's looking pretty good, so let's hit enter. And then I can move this into my room. So let's use move, and I'll grab it from the center point and move it in. Now maybe I'm thinking, that plant is looking pretty big, you know, especially if I want it to look something more like that. Well, what I can do is a simple scale from the modify panel. So I'll select my plant here, enter, pick the center point, and I could do it by eye, which is pretty tricky, or I could type in the number like we've done before. So I, I'll type in a 0.5 to make it 50% of the original size. That looks a little better. Now I can move that back into the corner, and then I'll do a simple copy to copy a few in a row. So I'll go from this uh, center point, I'm going to turn on ortho, and I'll copy this out maybe 5 feet away and then 10 feet away. So get something, you know, that looks looks about like that. The final step to make this one look like the original would be to simply hatch in the walls. So on the home tab, we're going to go to hatch, pick solid, pick points, and we'll just hover our mouse in that wall, click, and hit enter. And that's the basics of how you would create a two-dimensional floor plan with a curved wall.